Only about 20% uh, of the world's population has um, ever flown on an airplane. Uh, I'm Chris Moll, and uh, I'll be taking you on a journey throughout Indonesia. I've been flying for a small but essential airline in Indonesia for the past seven years. I have uh, primarily been flying in the easternmost part of Indonesia called West Papua, which is located just north of Australia. During my time in uh, West Papua, I've personally seen the struggles of a rising society. Some of the tribes in West Papua didn't make contact with the modern world as late as the 1970s. Such was the case for this um, tribe here in uh, Korowai. It's called the Korowai tribe. It's a former cannibalistic tribe. They're still living up in the treetops to this day and living very the way they've always done. A large majority of the people on the Papuan island came out of a literal stone age after World War II, after 1945. This picture here is not very old, it's just a few months old, and it shows a stark contrast between the world that we live in here and the world that they are still living in and that they came out of not that long ago. People in remote areas of Indonesia rely on air travel uh, for um, contact with the modern world. And a whole network has been set up around it. So as you can see here, these are all the routes that I've flown during my seven years in Indonesia, crisscrossing the country, delivering supplies where needed be. This here is a close-up of West Papua, which relies even more on air travel. There are no roads. There is no infrastructure in this part of Indonesia. Air travel is the only infrastructure. However rich in natural resources Papua is, it's still one of the most underdeveloped remote places on Earth. Landing on top of a mountain ridge might be the only runway, the only place to land in the mountainous jungle of West Papua. Fuel supply is an obviously great demand for such an operation that relies on air travel. This map here is from Pertamina, which is a state-owned supplier of fuel across Indonesia. And each dot here shows the fuel uh, supply point where you can pick up fuel. Fuel often runs out due to late arrival of freight ships in Indonesia. Other issues include improper fuel storage. This is in the middle of the jungle. I think we counted a total of 2,000 drums, and each drum is about 200 liters. Other issues, leakage and dumping of contaminants into the nature is not uncommon in Indonesia. Hazardous fueling from homemade fuel carts adds to the excitement of the day. As air travel in Indonesia has quadrupled over the last few years, and more people moving up into the middle class and being able to afford to fly, Indonesia's 270 million inhabitants spread over 17,000 islands need a more environmental and practical solution to air travel. A study found that Indonesia has the potential to generate 788,000 megawatts of power from renewable sources, such as wind, solar, tidal, and geothermal. This is more than 14 times the country's current usage and has not gone lost on Indonesians, who are currently slowly but gradually working to create a greener future and a more sustainable future for themselves. Electric air travel might just be the green solution we need in order to solve multiple issues, as air travel has come to stay in Indonesia. If electric air travel can work in the Nordics for 27 million people with good infrastructure and with alternatives to infrastructure, it can certainly work for an island nation 10 times the size of the Nordic countries combined, who is lacking proper infrastructure and uh, whose geography makes it dependent on air travel. So back to your question, it's not the worst place to be a pilot. <laughs> and thank you very much.